Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine. Today I'm sharing with you the books and resources for a reptile unit. Now this unit follows closely to our dinosaur unit, which followed closely to our fossil unit, which followed right behind our geology unit, mineralogy and rocks unit. So all of these sort of together make a huge unit, but I'm going to focus on just a couple of resources for reptiles in particular, in case that's all that you wanna do. But I do highly recommend that you tie it in with some of these other units because they were super engaging. So I'm going to start out with my favorite game. This is trivia based. Well, one of my favorite games, I should, I should say. This is by Professor Noggins. This is the Reptiles and Amphibians um, card game. And look at that. This one's brand new. We get to open it together. So this game, these games have uh, beautifully illustrated cards. However, this is the old version. The new version has photos on the cards that might also include some illustrations, but all of the illustrations have been updated. So you're not going to find these ones anymore unless you find one of the older kits, which this one is, or older games, the older versions. So these ones, oops, I just, oh, here it is. These ones like all the other Professor Noggins games, come with illustrations on one side and questions on the other side. They have easy and they have hard. Sometimes I'll do the hard questions for myself. Like my kids and I will play this. We'll give each other like maybe five cards and then we'll ask the other person a question and then whoever gets it right gets to keep the card. And sometimes they'll ask me the hard questions and I'll ask them the easy questions. And sometimes I can ask them the hard questions and they have to ask me the easy questions. But it's a really fun game. We won't play the whole stack because that might take like 45 minutes but we will play like maybe five cards at a time and if we have a little more time we'll play more cards um it does come with dice but we never use the dice we just will ask like the first question and if that question's already been done like if we're playing this every day for a unit for like you know a week or so then we would have gotten through all of the cards at least once in that case we'll just ask the second question and third question and then we'll move on to the hard questions a little bit later in the unit it's a little bit harder to play this right when you're starting out a unit only because you're you and your children might not have enough information learned yet and this is trivia based so sometimes a little bit later in the unit or sometimes we'll just pull them out after the unit's done as a way to review the unit that we've already done okay I have a couple of books to share with you. This is one of the DK eyewitness books and it's on reptiles and the DK eyewitness books are they have a very similar format so they're actually, this one's kind of the opposite, almost no illustrations, almost all photography, or you have like some sketches, but it's not like illustration based the way you'd see a picture book. And it's going to go through topics that I feel are contained within a two page spread, which means that if you don't read this cover to cover, you can still just read selections and get enough information for if there's something specific, like a specific topic that you wanna study within this book, you could just read a two page spread and not have to worry about reading it cover to cover. At the same time, it's not much of a book to read cover to cover because it's some it's disjointed in a way that doesn't flow so well to read it cover to cover. In part also because I don't I don't particularly like books with a lot of captions. I prefer just to read just read this main paragraph. All of these extra captions really um, sort of derail me from the flow of reading the book. But what I've done in the past is that I'll just focus on this part and then we can get through the book much faster. And then based on the pictures, I'll ask the kids to choose like one or two different captions that, that interest them. And then that's all that I'll read and then we'll just move on. And that's worked really well for us because I started to give a lot of my DKI witness books away because I was finding that I wasn't using them. They were taking up space. I'm sure another family could use them far more than I could. And I... I just I wasn't really enjoying them that much and then when I sort of changed how I approached these resources I found that th I found that they fit into our main lessons and unit studies a little bit better so this one's called discoveries and it's reptiles and we have other books in this series and it's there I I like the illustrations but I realized that some of the books in our library are now maybe 20 or 25 years old and so they have definitely aged and some of the content is still relevant however when it comes to science content I do recommend that you pick up the latest books that are available because there can be 
uh, new research. Often there is new research that uh, changes some aspects of the book. Sometimes it's just a main theme that changes, like there's new research about dinosaurs, for instance, and that can change like some of the, the main themes and then maybe still the individual dinosaurs and the fossils that they found, like that, that hasn't changed. However, if you are looking to you know, start up your, this, this new unit for the first time, uh, the library is a really great source because they don't usually keep things that are too outdated. And that way you can kind of rest assured that it's some of the latest, um, research in science for some of these books. Um, there's some things that don't change as fast as other, um, other things. And so if you had these in your library already, like personally, I would still use them. And I would just maybe uh, refer to some online resources or uh, a book from the library if it was something that I was a little bit like unsure of. If I was reading something, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm not sure if that's, that's still accurate or relevant. Okay, so I like this book because of the illustrations. I know that that's, again, not something that a lot of people are going to care for because the illustrations are a little bit more on the dated side, but they still appeal to me. So when I was putting this unit together, I went ahead and I picked up some of the other books that we have that relate to reptiles. And I have to say, I'll just say it from now, I know a lot of young children that have an extensive uh, extensive knowledge when it comes to reptiles, especially dinosaurs and and animals or mammals or whatever uh, animal group that interests them. I find that young children can dive really deep into that topic area. Um, of all of the science topics, I think reptiles is one that it has not interested me so much in the past to the point where that that game was still wrapped up. So clearly we haven't played it yet. But we did do our ocean unit and we have done other units that incorporated some of these topics like our dinosaur unit, but we haven't done specifically a reptile unit before. So I'm going to share with you some of the things that I think would fit into this unit. So we do have our turtles and I have to say that in the past I have been called out on calling tortoises turtles. So I apologize for that first off. And if I am saying anything wrong now moving forward <laughs> regarding reptiles. I apologize as well. I am just not as familiar with them as other science topics. So I want to share with you this game. And let me see if I can remember where we got it from. Uh, I It might have been... Uh, you know, I, I can't remember now. Uh, yeah, okay, hold on. No, I can't remember where it's from, but you can get more information from seaturtles.org slash classroom dash resources. Uh, it, on the blog post that accompanies this video, you will find the link. At the moment, it escapes me. So if you enjoy this one, um, then head over to the blog post that accompanies this video. It's going to include some of the other units as well. So it's quite a large unit we got these after we went to Hawaii one year and this is actually where this turtle is from and we were um, swimming in the ocean and the sea turtles were just all around you and we learned that you're not allowed to touch them at all um, even though it's super tempting and that's when we ended up getting this because we were just really intrigued by them so each one of these is a different um, must be just of a different species possibly or maybe there are male and female is why they're different colors I'm really sorry about that but there is something that is this that should be the same about each of these and I believe that's the number of segments on their turtle shell so there there might have been other parts that I'm missing from this this game and that's all I can tell you about this game <laughs> I'm really sorry. We did not play it, but we did observe observe the different sea turtles. Um, but that was that was the extent of this one. But it is just it's really nice, and the pieces are very nicely made. We did um, get our little sea turtle, our little wooden sea turtle, as a souvenir when we were in Hawaii. And also, speaking of sea turtles, we have this wood, um, sorry, wool pelts needle felting kit. This was the sea turtle, and then these are the sea turtles that we needle felted. 
and this was another really fun hands-on project however um the needles for needle felting are extremely sharp and it's not recommended for younger children but because i was working with older children my younger children participated anyway and so they each did one at the time and i don't remember how old they were and also for it being waldorf based um, while needle felting has been adopted by a lot of Waldorf families, I don't think that it originally came from the philosophy, even though wool is used extensively. Um, but we did, um, we did include this when my children were a little bit older. You can certainly include needle felting if you'd like, but it's not one of those hand, uh, handwork skills that you're going to find in the curriculum. Just want to put it out there in case you're seeing this and wanting to include it for that reason. Moon's Messenger. Um, I really like this book, not only because the illustrations are absolutely stunning, I also really like the paper. So this is called Stone Paper, and it, um, it's kind of cool because it, it seems like it's pretty environmental, but Stone Paper requires no water. It's pulp uh, and paper is one of the industries that pollute Oh, I'm sorry. Pulp and paper is one of the industries that pollutes the world's water supplies the most. Stone paper requires no trees. One ton of stone paper saves more than 20 trees. Deforestation is a fact and has a huge impact on biodiversity. And stone paper requires no bleach. The limestone used during its production is naturally white, while tree paper production uses large amounts of chemicals. I thought that was the neatest thing, especially for a book like this that's talking about sea turtles and their, um, I don't remember if they were endangered or we were just told not to touch them when we were in Hawaii. I, I, I apologize for not remembering that, but I love the paper. It's going to be cooler. This is really interesting. It's cooler to touch than tree paper. And the illustrations in this book are stunning. They're so beautiful that we actually did a project where we, when we did this unit, and I believe, or I'm sorry, when we read this book and it was part of our ocean unit rather than a reptiles unit, we did little cards that were maybe about four inches by six inches and we watercolored on the card. And on the flip side, we added some questions and qu like trivia questions to mimic the Professor Noggin's cards. We had great fun doing it and I used this book as inspiration for all of the illustrations and they it's just so stunning, so beautiful. Okay, we also have the green sea turtle and again this one we used as part of our ocean main lesson block but you can also use it here for reptiles although I kind of liked for me I, I wanted to have the reptiles be more on the um terrestrial i suppose versus aquatic uh and so i'm still including them here because these are the books that we have so this is a really lovely picture book as well and i again love including picture books in our main lesson blocks in our unit studies i find that they really bring like multiple ages together at first you think it's just going to be for young kids but just because of the pictures they're actually appealed to kids all the way up through junior high, in my opinion, although it's a little bit more challenging to get a junior high student to sit next to you to read a picture book. It's a lot easier to be reading them to the younger kids and then the older kids feel like, oh, okay, I'll just sit here and and listen and look at the pictures because they're really beautiful. I'm really impressed with the variety and quality of picture books today. Um, these aren't my favorite kinds of illustrations, but I still like them. <laughs> I, I am partial to the hand-drawn illustrations versus the computer illustrations, but a lot of great information. And then I have a few books on snakes. This one's called Verdi, and this has been in our homeschool library for so long. And again, I'm really into these kinds of illustrations. A really sweet picture book to add to, um, to this unit but it's also just a great picture book to have as just a bedtime story or um, just reading to to young kids when my children got into school age we uh, read a lot of our picture books as part of our school um, and then we would read longer novels as they were going to bed uh, and, and still some picture books for the really younger kids, but I would read aloud longer fiction books before they went to bed. But that's, it's been many years because my children are older now. <laughs> 
We have Eyes on Nature, Snakes, and this book I believe is one that I picked up from the library bookstore. Whenever we go to the library, I always scan the bookstore and if I find any nonfiction books that I think will work well with our homeschool, I pick them up. They're usually really affordable and I mean, sometimes they're super inexpensive, like 25 cents or 50 cents, which, you know, at that point, it's of no consequence if you're only reading a little bit of it or if you don't read it at all and then you end up donating it. That's why I really like checking out the library bookstore. Um, sometimes they are older books, but also sometimes you can find some new, really amazing current books um, for a steal. Just a really great price. This one's called Snake Strange and Wonderful. And I really like this series of books. I found them to be really informative, um, sometimes a little more so than, say, a picture book that's more fiction-based but still has science content. Like, for instance, um, like this one is a story-based picture book, and it still has amazing content. But this one is a picture book that's basically a non-fiction book that has beautiful illustrations. I believe that um, the beginnings of, of this series of books is a little bit more like a story and then it dives into the more scientific content. At least that's the ones that I remember reading. I can't remember for all of the series if they're like this. I ended up liking this book or the first one that we read and I don't remember which one it was it might have been penguins or it might have been sharks but I liked it so much I ended up looking for all of the books in the series and at the time I think I got most of them I don't know if there are new ones this has been several years since we did that okay I think that is everything I hope that you enjoyed this look at our small but beautiful reptiles unit I apologize for not knowing much about the sea turtles project I hope that you'll check out the blog post that accompanies this video you'll find all of the resources that I'm using and more pictures on the books that we have used as well as links to those materials and if you'd like to see how we're homeschooling on a daily basis you can find me on Instagram at pepper and pine